Hey, welcome to Noon Prayer. We are continuing today to dive into investigating the eight uh, summer habits. There are eight healthy habits that we have in our lives as believers. Uh, they build a better relationship uh, between ourselves and Christ and ourselves and other people. Today we're going to look at habits number three and four. Habit number three is daily spending time in silence. This is a powerful principle. David records in Psalm 46, verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. Have you ever know, noticed how hard it is to hear the voice of God when everything around you is noise and chaos? Or how hard it is to hear His voice when you never stop talking? Elijah rec recognized this in 1 Kings. Uh, he had just been through incredible uh, trials, incredible victories, and he he speaks to this in First Kings chapter nineteen, uh, starting with verse eleven. Then he said, "Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord." And behold, the Lord passed by, and there was a great and strong wind that tore in the mountains, and it broke the rocks. Now listen to what he says: It broke the rocks into pieces. The Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after that, there was a great earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after that, there was a great fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after that, a still, small voice. We see in Proverbs 27, verse 19, As in water, face reflects face, so a man's heart reveals the man. The purpose of silence is reflection. It's you really seeing who you're becoming. Who is the man in the mirror? Who is the face in the water? And it's allowing the Lord to speak to you through silence. Silence allows us to take deep reflection. It, it allows us to ask ourselves the question, would I want to follow me where I'm going? So let's pray for the next couple minutes about the power of silence. Lord, I pray today that as we look into water and it reflects our face, so we would stare into your word and be silent before you and allow you to speak to us today. Lord, I pray today that as we, we sit with you and before you, that we would not just be so busy talking to you that we would fail to listen to your response. And as we are in silence today, I pray that you would heal bodies. I pray that you would mend relationships. I pray that you would give direction that you would pour out your wisdom. You're not always in the noise. You're not in the sirens and the, the symbols. You're not in the, the, the radio waves that we, we fill our lives with. Sometimes, God, we just need to set in peace with you. And that's enough. It's in those quiet moments where you reveal your character, where you show us our character, where you show us new qualities of you that we don't even know, we've never even experienced yet. And so I pray for someone today who they're struggling with silence, that they would just press, that they would lean into you that they would realize this. You, 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 you taught those that were religious before us, God. You, you said things like you are not impressed with our wordy prayers. But that you show up, God, in the silent moment. Sometimes when we don't even know what to say. But we pause our life enough to listen. We listen to what others are saying around us and to us. We listen to what your word is speaking to us. We listen to what uh, friends and family are saying to us. We listen to you whispering in your still small voice. 
directly to us. Let us not undervalue, let us not underestimate the power of silence today. Lord, we understand that healthy believers, that healthy leaders daily sit silently before you. And so if it's awkward, it may just start with a few seconds and then go to a few minutes and then a few minutes to many minutes and many minutes to hours. But it's there where we find you in the quiet place. And we desire to be healthy. We desire to be, to be whole. And we know if we're always speaking and filling our world with noise, so many times we miss you. We walk right past you. So many times we look for you in the spectacular, but the supernatural is often found in the silent. You taught your disciples this when you was on the sea and chaos was all around them and you spoke to an ocean that was raging. Peace, be still. Someone needs to hear that today. Be still. And know that you are still God. God, thank you so very much for silence. Just because we don't hear anything doesn't mean you're not speaking. Sometimes... It just means we need to lean in a little more and listen. God, thank you so much for teaching us how to be healthy and whole. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll have it number four is a really powerful principle that we find in the Word of God, and it's every day, spend time with those that strengthen your soul in a healthy way. Now, I say in a healthy way because people can strengthen you in an unhealthy way, and we have to make for sure that we put people around us, that we surround ourselves with life, that the people that are speaking to you and in you uh, are speaking directly to your soul. Your soul is your mind, it's your will, and it's your emotions. And so to be healthy followers of Jesus and to be healthy leaders, we have to have a healthy soul. Our mind has to be healthy. Our will has to be healthy. That means that we're not just living life by our want to, but we're living by the kingdom principles of it's not my will, it's his will be done. And our emotions have to be healthy. We need to be emotionally healthy people. And we don't live by our emotions, but emotions are very, very real. Your will is very, very real. And your mind is very real. That's where most of the battles take place in life. We see this in Psalm uh, we see this in many places, but I, I want to read to you Psalm 1, and we'll just look at the first three verses. It says this, and this is the verse for us here at the church at Pawnee Assembly. Pastors often said this. He said, be the tree, and what it looks like is this. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Surround yourself with healthy people. Nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of of the scornful or the mocker, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. It's daily delighting with the Lord in the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Now listen to what he says here. He says, that man, 
or that person shall be like a, a tree that is planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. You know something crazy about trees is they don't produce fruit every season. They produce fruit in season. This is why you have to have emotionally, uh, mindfully, and willfully put people around you that recognize our season that we're in, that brings forth fruit in its season, whose leaf does not wither. I love that. And whatever he does will prosper. That word prosper is you'll be successful at what God's called you to do. And so in life, really, we have no excuse of who speaks into our life. We choose who sits at our table, who speaks into our life. And I think as, as believers and followers of Christ, we must daily ask ourselves uh, when we evaluate this principle of emotionally healthy people around us that speak to us, is are we living our lives in balance? Do I really enjoy the life that God has given me to live? You see, you can't control what happens to you, but you can always control how you respond to what happens to you. Another question to ask yourself is, who are the people outside of your immediate family? And I say that because uh, you don't get to choose them. Uh, who are the people outside of your immediate family who strengthen your soul? Who speak and pump life, biblical life, into your mind, to your will, and your emotions? In Psalm 138, verse 3, David prays this very principle. He says, Lord, strengthen my soul. And so I want to spend just a few minutes here with you praying this principle that you would put godly people around you, spiritually healthy people that would give you strength. So Lord, we ask right now that you would surround us, you would encamp around us, God, those that you would position that would speak life to us. God, those that would speak truth to our emotions. They would correct them when they're out of balance. They would, be, they would encourage us and be encouraged by our emotions when they're in balance. Those that would challenge our will with the word of God, but would recognize when our will is moving with the word of God. Those that would talk to us in ways according to the principles of your word and the conduct of how you've called us to live that would challenge our mind in the way that we think constantly and when our thought life is array when it's not in sync with what you would ask of us or call of us Lord, they would come around us. They would equip us. They would encourage us. They would correct us to come back into alignment with your word. You teach us this principle, God. In Romans 12, 1 and 2, you say that we're to be transformed by the renewing of our mind according to your word. And so today I pray that for someone that's joining us Help us to renew our mind, the way we think. Lord, show us that the way we think is what we speak and how we speak is eventually how we act. And so if we want to change habits and actions, it starts with our thought life. Let us think like you. Because you tell us in your word, Lord, that we do not think as you think. We see through, we do not see as you see. We see the glass from our perspective, our view. But you say your thoughts are not our thoughts, nor your ways are ways. But that's not our desire. Our desire is we recognize to be healthy. We must think like you think, that your ways would become our ways. 
that your actions would become our actions, that your intents would become our intents. So teach us, retrain our brain to think kingdom, to think like you think, to say what you say, to act like you would act. Because we understand the power that takes place in the thought life of our mind. And I pray for someone who's joining me today, who doesn't see themselves the way that you see them, Jesus. I pray clarity over them, that they would see themselves as a king's kid. They would know that your plans are for them. They're to prosper them. They're to bless them. They're not to hurt them. They're to make them better and better and better. You're to protect them, to advance them, to give them life and hope greater than anything that they could dream, ask, or imagine, God. Lord, we, we pray that we would be those people of life, that we would be healthy people that produce healthy people, God. That when our family looks to us, they would see what the health of your kingdom looks like. When they listen to us, we would speak words that would sound intelligent because they line up with your kingdom. That we would be well-equipped ambassadors, God. That we would represent you well. That we would be available for those who need healthy people to put around themselves that we would be healthy and ready. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, as I said, you need those two things in your life uh, to be healthy uh, people and healthy people develop healthy habits. And two of the greatest healthy habits you can form in your life is number one, spend silence daily before the Lord. Listen to what he has to say. And number two is put healthy people around you who feed your soul in a healthy way. That's your mind, your will, and your emotions. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. And we hope to see you right back here next week where we continue this summer to go through the eight summer habits to develop healthy followers of